praise the Lord. I know it's Easter Sunday, and it would be much more enjoyable if we were able to be together on this day. I truly wish that uh, this, and pray that this coronavirus will quickly leave our country, and then we'll be able to get back to normal. But since here we are, we uh, um, want to do our best to focus in this day on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us. He died, rose again, and died, was buried, and rose again. And we're going to address that today. So let's look at our scriptures. 24 and verses 1 through 7. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. It came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why speak, seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. So today we're going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful once again that we can come to you. And during this time where we may be physically separated, I pray that you join our spirits, our effort, and our minds to the one thing here today is focusing in on the provision brought by the resurrection. We thank you, Lord, that you came and you died on the cross. You were willing to be buried and to spend three days in the grave and then to raise again and implement this new way of life that's available to us. We just want to give you the glory and praise. In Jesus' name. So let's look at our interscripture. Upon the first day of the week, which that means Sunday, very early in the morning. And why do you think it was so early in the morning that the Lord decided to resurrect? Because he was tired of being dead. He, he had said he had to be there three days. And when the morning came, he came also. A lot of churches have sunrise services, and that would be exciting to be a part of. Matter of fact, if you're so inclined, you can watch this video at sunrise on Easter morning bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. So there was a group of ladies that came to, to uh, uh, spice the body, which was a, a, a way of uh, honoring, and uh, it was part of what they did in that culture. And verse number two, it says, And they found the stone rolled away from the sun. They entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus, and it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth. So they came and uh, came into the tomb. The stone was already rolled away from the mouth. The door was already open, we'll put it that way. And they looked in there, and then nearby, and in some renditions it says that there were some inside, some were outside, uh, depending on the situation. But they noticed two men, or as we know, angels, because men don't have shining garments at this point. They were standing there, and I verse 5 into part A and part B. They, the angels, said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? I just think that's hilarious. They came, even though he told them, he had told them, we're going to read this in a second, but he said, I have to die and I'm going to be dead three days, but I'll get back up. And it's interesting how people don't hear what they don't want to hear. He said it more than once. Jesus told them several times. But there's something about the human brain and the human spirit that when news is brought to us that we don't want to hear and are capable of just kind of denying it, we let it go by the wayside because it's not the words we wanted to hear. And so 
when the events came, just exactly like Jesus said was going to happen, they were perplexed. They were confused. They were afraid. But he said that they were going to kill him. They told him he was going to be crucified. And he told them that he was going to raise again in three days. Well, others had been raised um, by the prophets of old, and Jesus had raised people from the dead, his friend Lazarus and uh, some others. He had raised them from the dead, but never had anybody raised himself from the dead. And so they thought it was impossible. Huh. Isn't it interesting a man that could stand up in a boat and tell the winds to cease and the waves to stop. A man that can call people four days dead. That it can raise a young man out of the casket on the way to the burial. A man that can heal only in of sickness and disease. Why did they doubt him? He never lied. But it was too much for them. They just wanted victory, victory, victory. And sometimes there is a pathway to get greater victory, and it's death. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Verse number 7, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Why, did the re or what, did the resurrection accomplish? That's what we're trying to figure out here. We're going to look at the different things that the resurrection actually did. Well, why did Jesus have to resurrect? Well, we're going to look into the... In chapter number 15, verses number 4, is known as the place that kind of identifies what we call the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved... If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Notice some key things that we have emboldened on this slide. The gospel are these things. The gospel brings salvation. But what is the gospel? It is the death, burial, and resurrection, or as the scripture uses here, it rose again, but we're going to use the word resurrection. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All three things had to take place. And as we'll find out soon, all three things need to take place in our life. Salvation. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The gospel is what provided the power to save people. The gospel. What? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It opened up the doorway. It made the way that salvation can come to mankind. You see, all through the Old Testament, they offered sacrifices. But the blood of... Um, uh, of sheep and of goats and of bullocks and such like could not wash away human sin. There had to be a sin, sinless man, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ. He was the only one that could do it. And when he came and died, the death, burial, and resurrection, because the gospel is the power. We're going to see how this power and salvation and gospel all over in a meal to bring up chapter 6 and verse 3 through 5, the Apostle Paul, who had just written what we read there in 1 Corinthians 15, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. We're going to look at this. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, and we'll see this later in another scripture, even so, we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we had been planted together in the likeness of this death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Now, we know that there is more than one resurrection. We want to talk about that. There is a spiritual resurrection. When a man or woman is born again, a new life.
life comes into us. But uh, even though the new life comes into us, we still live in a sinful natured body, which causes a struggle because it's the only thing that's tempted is our humanity. So we are resurrected in spirit, but the resurrection of the body, the new body, has not yet come. We'll talk about that later. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. This is the first message preached after Jesus had died, been buried, and resurrected. He told his disciples, I'm handing it off to you. Go and preach everything that I've taught you. Teach everything that I've taught you. It's time for you guys to go without me. Now, he wasn't going to leave them alone spiritually, but he was leaving in his human body. He was going to be glorified or ascended to heaven. Then Peter said to them, repent. Repentance, and we can bring some scripture up about this, but repentance is a death. It is when we die out to self. It says, no longer am I going to live after my own desires and my own passions and my own direction, but I am now turning to you, God. And right now, the old man I want to put behind me. And how do we put it behind us? As we read in Romans chapter 6, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sins. Baptism is the burial. We repent, which means we, in a sense, crucify the old man, and then we baptize him. And notice a few things. It says, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sins. Remember that, it's going to pop up again. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is newness of life, or resurrection of the dead spirit that was in us because of sin. Matthew chapter 26 and 28 shows us this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Hebrews 12 and verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. If you notice up in the upper right hand corner there, it says new covenant. The resurrection the death, burial, and resurrection brought a new covenant to us. Now, I know in Matthew, he says the New Testament, and New Testament and New, Te new Covenant are not synonymous, but they run together. The New Testament means that this is the will of God after the death of Jesus Christ. The covenant is the, is the agreement, this new agreement, resulting from the death, burial, and resurrection, the shedding of the blood, this new agreement that God has made with mankind, saying this is the framework by which you and I, me as God, you as human, how you and I will relate to one another. So, Jesus is a mediator of the new covenant. How? Because of the blood of sprinkling. Let's speak of better things than that of Abel's blood. It, whose blood? The New Covenant was brought, or the New Testament was brought, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at this connection, though. Like figure would be even baptism doth also now save us. So the Bible tells us that baptism saves us. How? Well, it answers in the parentheses there, not to put away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. What that means is not putting away the dirt. It's not like taking a bath, the filth of the flesh. It's not like taking a bath and scrubbing, scrubbing the dirt off. But the answer of a good conscience toward God, meaning that God cleanses our conscience through baptism. And how is this accomplished? It was sealed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If he had not gotten out of the grave, it wouldn't work. But he did. He resurrected. Hebrews 10 and 29 mentions the blood of the covenant. And that's what Jesus' blood is. It is the blood of the new covenant. Look here in Hebrews 10 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, say the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts. In, in their mind will I write them. This is important. Part of this covenant is a transformation of our heart. God is going to write his laws in our heart. 
Um, if you uh, watched and listened to the last lesson on Wednesday, we talked a lot about that, about how um, sometimes there is this confusion in the religious world that thinks that just because God brought grace into the world that we should try to live good, but it really doesn't matter how bad we live, just as long as we believe in Jesus Christ, because God took away all the rules. That's not true. He took them even deeper, and he put them in our hearts, so that we should, we will by nature live out the holy and godliness, because we feel it from our heart, not just as a list of rules. It says, I'm going to write them in your mind. That kind of event, how does that happen? Where does that begin? How do, how do you get that writing inside? Look at this. Ezekiel eleven nineteen, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. How is it done? It's done by the new spirit. What is that spirit? The Holy Spirit or what we also call the Holy Ghost. Here again, back to Acts 2.38. Like I said, this was the first message preached after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And the people said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is the resurrection. So, here again, let's look at some more how this connects, how the Holy Ghost connects. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness. Now, it's a fancy way of saying Holy Spirit. Uh, and it is a Holy Spirit. By the resurrection of the dead. The Holy Spirit was only made available because Jesus resurrected from the dead. If he hadn't resurrected, it would not have been enacted the gospel. The gospel would not be valid. The gospel would not have the power. The gospel would not be able to create new life in man. But because he resurrected from the dead, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is available to us. More scriptures along that line so we can better understand. In John chapter 7 and verse 39, Jesus in chapter 7 is talking to the people, and he is telling them if they're thirsty, spiritually thirsty, come to him and he'll give, he'll give them drink. And then it says in parentheses, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Ghost could not be given, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, synonymous, same thing, could not be given because Jesus was still here. Let's look again. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The Comforter, what's the Comforter? I'm glad you asked. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So, the Comforter is the Holy Ghost. He said, I can't give you the Holy Ghost till I leave. A lot of people want the Holy Ghost. Uh, a lot of people at that time wanted the Holy Ghost. They wanted the Spirit of God. They saw the promises in the Old Testament. And Jesus told them, you can't get it. Till I leave. Hmm. Even before the day of Pentecost, Jesus had rose again, and he told them, Go ye and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In Acts 1 8, he says, And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. There's power in the Holy Ghost. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope 
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. How did he bring us this abundant mercy? How did he provide this hope that is exceptional, that is lively, both now and in the future? He did it because he rose from the dead. If he had not rose from the dead, this lively hope for both our present life and for the future would not have been available. Thank the Lord. And Romans 8.11 if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Well, what was that? That was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, uh, the Holy Ghost, all the same thing. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the reason why I say that every time, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, is I want you to really understand that they are the same thing. So the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, if it dwells in us, when that day comes for us to be resurrected, that Spirit is the one that's going to do it. See, we saw that the Spirit gives us life now, but it will give us life later also. It will, as um, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm not sure where it's at right now, but it talks about how that this body is uh, corruptible. I mean, it is, uh, it's not holy, it's not pure, it is defective. But when we arise in the new resurrection, in that life, not only will our spirit be resurrected, but our flesh or our human body will be a glorified body just like Jesus Christ and when that happens happy day the new body will never be tempted it cannot be tempted because it's not made in the likeness of sinful flesh but in the glorified body like Jesus Christ he's going to quicken our mortal bodies which means to make alive by his spirit as we conclude the resurrection of Jesus. Luke chapter 20 verse 36 says, Neither can they die anymore. Once we attain to that final resurrection, that final life, we can't die anymore. There will be no death. O oh, death, where is thy victory? Or sting, O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Something like that. It's not there anymore. For they are equal unto the angels. Who? The children of God. Why? Because they are the children of the resurrection. You see, if we want to be in that final resurrection where we will spend eternity with Jesus Christ, we must have, first have the spiritual resurrection. Have that spirit dwell in us so that Jesus can raise us from the dead just like he raised up, he was raised up from the tomb. Praise God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ can happen right now in your life, in your heart, by receiving the Holy Ghost. If you don't understand how to receive the Holy Ghost, look back to the lesson that we um, did a couple weeks ago about understanding John chapter number 3. It goes into it very well. And then also, if you want to look at the follow-up, talking about Jesus raises the bar. Both of those will connect you and give you instruction. And we're so glad that you're able to be a part with, uh, part with us today. We're thankful for what God is doing in your life. And we just pray that God blesses you on this Easter day.